My name is Elsa Kennedy. My character is George. We only have one guitar. Get your own band. I'm kicking you out. Kent Harper, and I'm playing the role of Buzz. It's you, darkening my fucking door. My name is Cheska Zaida, and I played Renka. I love shit. I like to forget future shit, too. I'm Jonathan Mancuda, and I play May. More madness. My name is Turin Robinson, and I played Isaiah. But was there ever doll? that praised his fleet. Steven Michael Martin, I play Kai, and everything will be fine in the end. It's beautiful, it's, it's the epitome of indie filmmaking, the independent film. Some people, it'll, be, it'll hit them like a Picasso painting, and some people will go, I don't get it. I fucking love you, man. It exhausted me. You were it. <laughs> Give me back my dog. George is somebody that has had to fight uh, tooth and nail for her entire life through everything that she's been through and um, hasn't really had a lot of opportunities right again. to and cope with any of the things that have happened to her. That back there happened. Are you done? Good. Get your heads together and we might survive this. Understand that much? Come find me when you're done crawling out of your fucking cribs. I finished reading it at like 11 p.m. and my blood was just boiling with how much I had just taken in the story, how it processed it was overload. I think Joe Bartone bases everything in truth. And I think he said that about this movie, that like every single character is based on someone he actually knows. I fucking, it was a fucking epiphany. It's Satori, I don't fucking know. She could not live with that dead woman on her head. None of you do. I can carry that for all of you. There's deep meaning <laughs> metaphors in it. There's underlying meanings that aren't set up, you know, stated in your face. So it's, it's gonna be taken all kinds of different ways. Joe Parto, madman or genius? Both, for sure. And he's a mad genius because the way that he's able to push past anything in his way. The worst memory is Elsa got stung by a bee. <laughs> bee incident, I think everybody would agree. My name is Angel Jimenez, and I was the co-producer on Everything Will Be Fine in the End. It was a shit show. I got stung by a fucking bee. Well, I'm allergic to bees, like a kamikaze bee, and I'm wearing a freaking plaid skirt that my butt hangs out of, and then I went into anaphylaxis. That was very scary. We, you know, I think everybody thought the project was over. Stabbing me with Epi twice, and then I uh, was on the ground that was covered in dumpster juice. And, I, and that was actually the most beautiful moment, too, because everybody rallied behind Joe. The whole production was kind of derailed because of that, but we wanted to film at least one scene, so we just pulled this scene out of our ass. I'm going to hang around just long enough to roast marshmallows over your goddamn burning corpses. New strips are stale. The scene where Mank and I are just, like, running through the streets of L.A. What the hell is wrong with Buzz? Could you stay focused for just 10 minutes? And it was just super fun, I think, because we weren't expecting to do it. The fuck are you wearing? What the fuck are you supposed to be? I'm an exoticos lucha libre wrestler. Okay. Transforming it to Tula, part of that is to get attention, but part of it is also realizing that, hey, I'm a different person now. Inside, I'm changed, I'm different. I'm realizing I've got to make now count. Hey. Look at that cool skater. have to be super diligent. Mm. You don't mind wearing protection? 
I got condoms in my purse. <laughs> the interesting thing about Joe and how he directs is he very rarely directs. By that I mean he doesn't tell you what to do once the camera is rolling. Julia, the dead woman that she's killed, is watching. At this moment, she has an epiphany. She no longer wants. She has no desire to want anymore because want has killed her. I think that's how he kind of pulls the natural responses, natural reactions out of everyone. Why do you bother with that guy? We used to be nice. No, we didn't. Kent definitely set a bar for the rest of the cast. I mean, he, the amount of raw energy and talent that that man can figure out how to funnel onto screen in front of people. And I mean, it's insane. The great thing about Joe is we talked about the character so much that by the time I had gotten there, I knew kind of where no. I wanted to go with it. And I was open to him telling me, no, do it that way or that way. But he was so open to just letting you be free. And I love that. Out. Where's Ray? So I gotta be honest, I don't even know what this film is about. <laughs> I'm not sure too many people do. I think, I'm pretty sure if you ask Joe what this movie is about, I, I don't think he really knows either. <laughs> Joe Bartone is the most ambitious artist I have ever met, ever. <laughs> and I mean that in, in definitely the best way. Um, Cause with this film, he like couldn't find the budget to hire an editor. So he's like, you know what? I'm gonna edit it myself. I'm gonna do the soundtrack myself. I'm gonna write it. Why? Because I want to. And I think it's really cool to work with someone with that drive and to know that he has this whole community of people around him that are willing to go balls to the wall and like have mental breakdowns and cry just to get this movie done. I think that speaks a lot to the character of Joe Bartone. He's someone that like really cares about his friends and the artists that he works with. What am I supposed to do with this? Call your dad? It's an iPhone. Exactly, it's got GPS. What about this? Try a pawn shop. Come on, Ara. Give it up. I got four of these, Ray. Why don't you get a job? Can you hire me? We're not hiring. Why don't you try Uber? They even give you a car. <laughs> ah. Just kidding. Just a bunch of, 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 of,